Stars, they come and go, they come fast, they come slow. They go like the last light of the sun, all in a blaze. And all you see is glory. What's up YouTube, this is Mark from Python for Trading here, and today I come with you with a brand new video. Sorry for the long wait between uploads, I've been very busy. However, I just managed to uh, use the quarantine as an opportunity to produce a new video. So I wanted to explain today how it is dead simple to use technical indicators in Python. There is a beautiful pre-built package called TALib. Let me just do a quick Google search. TA lib Python and the first result will be a GitHub page and it is a pre-built Python library that features many popular trading indicators and today the objective of this video is to explain how you will use these indicators. So right off the bat I also want to outline that I decided that TA lib is too difficult for new Python users to install. So what does that mean? It means that I pre-configured a portable Python environment. Now that does not make sense in English, so I'll explain it in layman's terms. So there is a Python distribution that does not install on your computer. It is literally click the .exe files and it'll open. You don't install anything. So that means I can configure this environment and then make you download this environment. So you don't have to go through the struggles of downloading and trying to set up everything. I have done the labor and it is complicated for new people to do this. So you don't have to worry about configuring a Python environment. All you need to worry about is just following along with the Python code in this video. So getting WinPython out of the way, um, once you extract all the once you install, my bad, you install this exe file, you will have a directory full of multiple files. However, um, this is where it gets complicated. So this will work, ex this is mostly meant to work with Windows. However, I'm using Ubuntu or you could use Mac OS. This will work too with a program called Wine. So if I were to just quickly show my console here, my other console, I am loading a, whoops, wrong console. I'm loading a Wine instance on this Ubuntu machine. So what does this mean? I have Wine installed and I'm using the command Wine console on the directory that this file is located. So on my computer, this particular instance of of uh, WinPython is installed in the .wine in your home directory on Ubuntu. So um, let's just find .wine, it's at the, right here. So .wine, C drive, WinPython, and then um, that's where my files are. So I'm just navigate to this directory and then do, do wine console, and then you would um, use the, this file right here is WinPython command prompt. So this for Ubuntu and Mac users, you will have to type pip install Thony and this will launch an IDE Thony editor. If you're using Windows, just click spider.exe and you don't have to worry about anything. That's why um, if you're using Mac and Linux, you have to jump through extra hurdles, but I assure you everything is working properly once you get through these hurdles. So now actually starting the video. So I loaded the IDE. So this could, like I said, it could be either be spider.exe or it could be uh, Thony. They're both fine. I'm using Thony because Sp Spider does not work with wine, like at all. It's too, um, it's too bloated. I'm, I'm just going to say that um, to make layman's terms. So this is a really simple 26 line script I've written in Python. So what are we doing? I have installed the Kraken API and what's good about the Kraken API is that we don't need to create a Kraken account. We could just use their um, service to get candlestick data. And it's nice because we could use this as a demonstration for the video. So um, that's what this, I also separated the code into uh, chunks. Each chunk represents uh, something different the code's doing, just so you could easy follow along. Okay, so these top lines one to six, it's just dedicated to accessing the API and getting the open, high, low, close candlestick data. 
So, um, lines 11 to 17, I am stripping the candlestick data into something we can use for the TA lib library. And then lastly, lines 19 to 26 is just very simply demonstrating how to use the TA lib library with the data that we fetched from Kraken. And altogether, if we were to run this file, it will produce a very uh, simple, nice, easy to follow result. And I'll keep the code, I'll put it on my GitHub or I'll put it on a Ghostbin link, probably on my GitHub. So we see the result here, it's, it's done. It says fetching from Kraken API. Um, we see the, the, the candlestick. So in the, this demonstration, I'm just gonna minimize. I am just showing the first uh, row, but in reality, there are probably 700 rows it's grabbing. But for this simple demonstration, I'm only printing the head of the row or the first row element. Moving on. Um, so like I said, so now moving, focusing the shift on line seven, 11 to 17, we see in the console, um, we have isolated the close, we've isolated the high, and we isolated the low into a NumPy array. So this is almost like a list, but it has uh, more functionality, and the TA lib uh, library demands you to have your, your numbers, your, your financial information in a NumPy array, which I have easily uh, demonstrated here. So I'll just quickly go over the, um, the close because the open, high, and low are all virtually the same. So I am from the um, open, high, low, close object that the Kraken API is returning to us. It is basically in a pandas data frame uh, orientation, I'm gonna say. And what I'm doing is I'm isolating the, the specific close column. So if we were to check, um, we actually can't see, but there is a close column and we're just saying um, all the close elements, please put it in a list and then actually make it a NumPy array. And that's like very simple to follow along um, once you start getting comfortable with this. So now actually, so that's good. We are able to isolate the desired financial information. And now what's left is to just use the information that we isolated into a technical indicator. So I'm creating a variable simple moving average and we are calling the TA lib library dot simple moving average and we feed it the close numpy array. And as a result, when I minimize when I maximize the console output, we see that the simple moving average um, produce some simple moving average um, information. So what I'm doing is I'm just saying get the last only display the last 10 numbers. So I with um, with the slice uh, Python method. So if we were just to quickly go to um, find the simple moving average. Um, okay, I'll just Google simple moving average, simple moving average. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what the simple moving average is. It is very um, yeah, perfect. You can see right here just first result on Google. Um, I hope. Okay, nice. So it is basically smoothing out the financial data into a line. And then with your hypothetical trading strategy, you would make some assumptions. Oh, if the, if the price crossed above the line, I'm going to buy in hopes that the price will continue going forward and vice versa, where we see that the, um, the price went below the line here and it resulted in a significant gain. But um, if that's, if you had some trading strategy based on the moving average, the simple moving average, my bad. So MACD and I'm gonna show you on Google, whoops, I'm gonna show you what MACD is just in case you're not familiar. It is a, it is a complicated indicator. It's basically an oscillator and a histogram, both in one trading indicator is very popular. So what the goal is, is that if this red line called the signal line is above the blue line, that MACD line, um, the momentum in this instance in the market is going downward. So what people often do is they have trading algorithms that try to uh, buy on the, the switchings of the uh, oscillation. 
And so that's a, a, a strategy that some people like to do. And lastly, um, I actually really like this strategy. It is the parabolic SAR. So if you were just going the Python code, um, look down here. So the, the parabolic SAR looks at the high and the low and it will create some kind of um, trailing, um, I guess, instance. So what we see here is, uh, let's go to parabolic SAR. Let me go on Google. Let me try to find the parabolic SAR. Um, okay, let's go to Investopedia. I'll just quickly explain the parabolic SAR. Okay, so it is a, I want to say like a momentum-based trailing system where if the, I'll, I'll just use the mouse here. So on the instance that um, price has breached below the SAR, the SAR would then wrap above a previous high and it'll trail downwards and it'll create a kind of, um, like a momentum like indicator telling you, okay, the, the, uh, it's currently bearish and it will continue until the trend ends when the price breaks above the parabolic SAR and then it will start to trail upwards. So I am really big fan of this indicator, but um, I'll just show you the Python implementation of the parabolic SAR. So like we can denote, it is very simple like the other ones. However, it looks at the high and low and we see that we got the high and low variables. We isolated them and we just feed them into the talib.sar function with the um, changeable parameters of acceleration and maximum. And that will produce a parabolic SAR that we do see in the output. And um, yeah, that's basically the video. I didn't want to make it a very long video. I wanted to just get really, uh, I just wanted to make a quick short video because a lot of people ask me a lot in the YouTube comments. And um, for me, this is something I thought I could very easily show people. So that's why I'm in this video. Um, thank you for watching and hopefully you will subscribe and enjoy more content to come. So thank you very much for watching.